first part here is the uh, DTS box, which has the Oryx uh, in it. Uh, there's a computer for control, uh, a connection junction box for the fiber optic, a keyboard, and a video display here. And there's the two platinum RTD TT100s there for measuring the temperature of, of the ice bath for, for the fiber optic reference point. Look a little closer at the components in the DTS box now. Uh, first we have a keyboard here. This is mounted on Velcro so it can be taken off and placed in your lap if that's more convenient. Um, the keyboard is a USB keyboard so it plugs into one of the USB ports here. Also there's a, a, a USB thumb drive for your data collection that will plug in there. Moving on to the monitor here, there's a power cable for it and that's plugged in on this. And on the monitor, you want to make sure you unplug that when it's not in use. At the computer or the DTS, these are locking toggle switches and you need to pull up on the handle and then turn it on or off. This is so that they can't accidentally be turned on and off when you're doing some wiring or connecting your fiber optic cables inside. The video cable for the monitor plugs in here. It's a standard uh, VGA video cable. Right here is the radio for the, the modem. It should be connected, but there's a USB cable at the top and a power cable here if anything should uh, come loose or something's not functioning right, you can check those two. The echo radio has a small radio down here and there's a USB cable plugged into it that should normally be plugged in also. The DTS box has a 7 amp hour battery inside it which will keep uh, the system operating for probably up to two hours, maybe slightly longer. Uh, while you're connecting things if you want to start things up while you're doing something else. And again we have the two PT100s here and here. These go through these two uh, strain reliefs here. The other ones are for your fiber optic cables and this plate in the center here is for mounting your fiber optic splices. There's a velcro strap on here and you can strap down your fiber optic splices. Fiber optic cables are then plugged into this junction box here. Uh, we have the power box assembly, so this supplies power from the solar panels to charge the battery and then power to the, the uh, DTS box. We're going to connect the battery so we can look at the display on the solar charge controller. So the two leads for the battery are marked, red for positive and black for negative. Looking at the power box now, there are uh, two main components in the power box. There is a, a power supply here for charging your battery and running the system off 120 volts AC. With a, you can plug your cord into here. Standard uh, extension cord will plug, three wire extension cord will plug into there. In the center part here you have a charge controller. This works for both the AC power and the solar. There's a, a display, a meter on the power box, or for the so, solar charge controller. And if you cycle through, you can get to the voltage and charge rate. And this is a good one to look at normally. This will give you your voltage and how many amp hours you have charging, so you can keep track of if your solar panels are putting out enough power to keep your system running. And once the battery is connected, TriStar will start going through its startup routine and then it will display the volts. Uh, also on the inside of the power box there is a 30 amp circuit breaker here. This is a resettable circuit breaker. Just simply push the little lever back in to reset it if something should short out. 